and hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. So today we will be talking about some basic types and variables in Lua. We won't be covering all the types because there is one type I want to make a dedicated video about, but it's called tables for in case you were interested to know. Let's get started. So there are a few types we can choose from. There are nil, which basically means nothing. It is empty. It's if you don't have a variable, it's nil. Which we'll get to what the variable is later as well. But anyways, then you have a number, and numbers is like one or one point two three two four and you know zero point one and forty four. That's a number. They have a string, and yeah, string is just words. So hello or hello world, you know. Like what we did with the, in a previous video where we printed out text, we're actually printing out strings. So strings have single or double quotes, and yeah, that's a string. And then we have booleans. There's basically yes or no, so true, which would be yes, and false, which would be no. And then we have tables, which we won't be getting into, but if you have any experience with other programming languages, tables are basically the oop of of Lua as well as arrays and dictionaries and whatnot. So yeah, well, we'll later get into tables. They're a bit complicated to begin with, so yeah, we'll leave that for later. So to create a variable, you can just say local. Maybe we could just local, and whatever you want your variable name to be. It can be anything as long as it doesn't start with a number or with quotation marks or anything that might be special so to stay safe use letters use underscores and yeah you can use capital lowercase letters you can use underscores you can you can't use dashes take note of that but yeah so to stay safe just stick with normal letters and underscores and you can also put numbers inside of them they just can't start with numbers so anyway so let's start with a for example now, if you do that, you've created a variable. Now, a variable is just a container. So, you remember with math, in like math class, you used to do things like 2 plus 5 is equal to x, right? You used to do that in math. Well, this x right here, that's a variable, and we're basically setting that variable. In this case, it's just a, but remember, like I said, in math class, it can be any letter. It's, it's a variable, either way. Or you could have been like something like 9 plus a is equal to 10, for example. And then what you have to do is you have to go and say a is equal to 10 minus 9. And then you will get a is equal to 1. But in this case, we are actually setting a. We are telling you what a is and you can do whatever you need with it. So, yeah, so we can actually set a. When we do this, we don't actually set the variable. It's basically an empty variable. So if we set print and we just set a, then if we were to run that with Lua, as you can see, we get nil. And as we as I said before, nil is basically an empty value. Nil can also be false, which we'll get to in later, but yeah. So nil is just an empty value, it's nothing. Now to give it a value, you can either, you can go equal to and give it its value. You can also set it to nil if you wanted to. You can do that if you want to give it like a number value. You can make it like two. Save that and run it here. We get two. We can also make it. We can also like go here and say a plus five. Now that will be the same as with your math class. You would like a plus five is equal to let's say. In this case, it would be 7 because a is 2. And then you would have moved 5 over to the sign and whatnot. If we run this, we get 7. Because a plus 5, that's 2 plus 5. Because remember, this is just, this variable, it's basically just another way of re referencing this, calling that number. So you don't have to say 2 everywhere that you say a, you can just say a. Or let's say you have like a string of text. You don't want to put that string of text everywhere in your program. You want to have it in one place. Like an example would be, look at this sentence here. What is the one thing that just would suck if we had to rewrite this? That's the name. Because the name appears three times. And we have to go on every every time we want to change it. Like let's say Phil, for example. Now we have to like 
Let's copy that and we have to go find Jack. And let's hope we don't miss that Jack because then we have to go and search for it again. That's a lot of effort. So what we as programmers can do is we can just say local name is equal to Jack. Now instead of doing that we can just If you run it, we get my name is Jack, I'm 12 years old, I've decided my name should not be Jack because the name Jack sucks. So what we can do, oh, also sorry for anyone who left the name Jack, I didn't really mean it to suck. So now if we want to change the name to Phil, we can just go Phil. Save that. We only have to change one line of code, but that one line of code changed everything instead of this. Now this is just a small example, but what this was on a larger scale, like maybe this was like thousands and thousands of lines of story or something like that. Then this name right there, that would become very, very, very useful. Now let's say you set a variable. You go, uh, you make local name equal to Jack again. And let's say after you have written like your 1000 plus line program, and you want to make sure that this program is optimized as much as possible for speed. One thing you can do is you can delete the name by saying name is equal to nil. That will basically delete the name because it will clear the variable. So if you want to do that, you can. So this also means you can later on rename or reassign variables. So if we were to go here and say print name, and we can just, yeah, we can go like that, and we can just copy this. C V and then V and then V. So here your name is Jack, here name can be 20, and here name can be false. We run that, as you can see we get Jack 20 false. So once you've declared the name and set it to something, you can just kind of change it wherever you want to. So yeah, once you've set it, you can just change it. You don't have to use local again. Local is just for assigning it on a local scope. So let's say you want to add two variables together. Then we can go local, something like a surname is equal to smitter, for example. Then we can just say print name dot dot add a space uh, dot dot surname. And we just remove that extra dot which is unnecessary. Run it and you can see we get Jack Smitter. We can do exactly the same, so if we want it in a variable, so if we want to do, do that, and we can go here and say local full name, we can make that equal to the name plus the surname, so then we can say full name, run that, we get Jack Smitter. So yeah, if you wanted to add two strings together, we also have a multi-line string, so let's say, let, let's, let's just say there's a description now. And description can have like that. Now this is a multi-line string, so I can say hello world. And remember the string actually starts here, so I can go cool or colo, whatever. And here remember that that tab, it, sh it actually creates a tab. So if you don't want that tab, you have to go, you know, you have to do that. So you print out description. Do that, as you can see, colo, and then tab. Hello world and then please. And as you can see there's also a new line because everything inside of this is actually taken literally which means if you don't want a new line you have to do that. If you don't want there to be a tag you have to keep it at side. So yeah and if you, if you were to do that then there would be a space here at the top or a tab here at the top. So yeah. So as we said before booleans they are true or false. There are multiple booleans you can uh, Give, so let's say, um, old. So let's say if the person is old, it should be true. So it should be yes, basically. So old, we can say that's uh, true, and then they are old. So yeah, we'll get later on to actually using booleans, but for now, right now, you can just know they exist. But take note that false, which is no, and nil are both false values. So both of them are basically equal to no. So just take note, these are the only false values in Lua. Which means that things like zero, so if you come from other program languages, zero, that's true. Negative one, that's true. An empty string, that's true. So, and true, of course, that's also true. 
So yeah, that is true. Now let's talk about scoping. So let's say we have a box. And in this box, we have a variable called x. So yeah, that's an x. So this variable, we don't actually want this variable to be accessed from outside of this box. So let's say this box is inside of a bigger box. Because this is kind of how a program will always be structured. A bunch of little boxes instead of one big box. So this x right here should be, should stay here. So this, if this x is set equal to 2, then this x should only be equal to 2 inside of this box. So if we were to print x here, So just imagine that's print and the function. If we print x here, it should actually output 2. But if we come outside of this box and we say print x, then this should return nil. This is because we don't really want this x to be accessed outside of this box. Because sometimes you just want your variables to stay in a local environment. So once you've used it, it should not be usable every, anywhere else. This is very useful, and you'll see later on why, because right now a lot of these things are just going to be wondering why do I need to know this. But yeah, this is a local scope. Now, there is something called a global scope variable. So imagine this right here. This is global. So that's G. And this right here, that's local. Because whatever is inside of here cannot be accessed outside here. But whatever is outside here can be accessed inside here. So if I were to create a variable a, and I were to make that equal to 5, if I were to print out a inside of here, then that would return 5. Same with if I were to print a here. That would return 5. The reason is because this box right here, this box is inside of the bigger box. The bigger box basically contains the little box and whatever is inside of the big box is also inside of the little box. And whatever is inside of the little box is also inside of the big box. But the big box cannot use what it is inside of the little box. Right now it might be a little bit confusing but if you got that, well done. So let's give you an example, or not an example, let's show you how to create a global scope variable. So to create a global scope variable, it's as easy as just typing the variable name. x is equal to 20, or c is equal to 20. That is a global scope variable. You might see that my IDE actually gives me a little bit of a blue line here. Because if we were to just press that there, as you can see, mark c as a defined global. Because... A global scope variable, usually in Lua, should start with a capital case, just so you can differentiate between these two variables. It doesn't matter if it is capital or lowercase, but just so you know that capital case, that will always be global, and that will always remind you that, hey, this is a global variable, I should be careful with it. While a local scope variable, that like C, for example, that can be equal to 20 as well, or well, let's make it 10. Take note that these two are not the same if we were to print out C and C, so big C and then small c. And we were to run that. As you can see, we had 10, 20 and 10. And this is because Lua is also, is also case sensitive, so lowercase c will not mean it's the same as a capital case c. We could do that and it will still give us the same output. But as soon as we change this lowercase c into a capital case c, then then this little c there doesn't exist anymore. My bad. But anyways, then if we were to print that out, we'd get 10, because this capital C is now equal to 10. There's another way we can define global scope variables, which is also a bit more recommended, is by going underscore g, and then dot, and then the variable name. So in this case, hello. And that can be like, hello there. Do that. And then this is a global scope variable as well. So if you ever want to know the type of a variable before we end this, so let's say we want to know what the type of x is, and let's say that's 12. 
So we want to print x, then we would get 12. I want to know what the type is because sometimes you want to know what is inside of this variable because it can be anything. What you can do is you can say type and in just in curly brace or just in braces you can, you can just get it. As you can see type, so if we were to actually split it in multiple lines you will be able to see that it's just another function or another thing we can print. Do that and as you can see we get number. If we were to do nil Then we get nil because nil is its own type. False. That would be a boolean. If we wanted to put a string in here, that would give you a string. So yeah, that is all there is to what I want to teach you today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and wasn't too confused by everything I taught you today. And see you all again in the next video.